Welcome back to Ta-da! 3D Printing. So it's time to change out the nozzle on the Prusa XL5 tool head. So I am running it stock right now at 0.6 nozzle and I ordered the 0.4 nozzles and got them in over the weekend, which was interesting timing because I changed this out on Sunday and then Monday is when Prusa said that they're going to just start shipping at 0.4. So this order, I also got in some MK4 build plates. These are just the regular steel sheets. I needed some more because I feel like mine are looking really rough. And I think it's interesting that they just say original Prusa now. They don't say MK4 or MK3. And then the real reason that I actually placed this order, I did want to get the shipping all together. These are the nozzles. So I ordered 5.4. And I'm checking in the box to make sure I didn't order anything else. I didn't think so. I didn't see anything else in there. I had put these in my cart a couple weeks ago. Um, I know a lot of people were talking about the great results they were getting with 0.4 nozzles. And I just was kind of on the fence because I felt like I was so close on my other prints to getting things. But then it just would have one random thing. Everybody said 0.4 is the way to go. So I finally pulled the trigger and got these in. And these come in kind of a cool little container. So definitely a little bit better than the adapter. You know, it, that was just in a bag. These are in kind of a cool little plastic container so you know which ones are which. And when you open them, it, they must have had these kind of customized because they are the right fit for them. They, they look good. You can see 0.4 on the silver stem, but it's very difficult to see. It's very, very small. So you have to have the right lighting to be able to see which one it is. But I like that it has that. So if you do set these down next to each other, you're not gonna mess anything up. So the first step is to, of course, unload the filament from whichever tool heads you're going to be swapping the nozzles on. And while the nozzle is hot, you might as well give it a little bit of a cleaning just to make sure that you don't have any residue that's gonna be an issue later. So I decided that I am going to change out the tool heads on four and five and run something on that. And then I'm going to run the same on tools one and two with the 0.6 nozzle so that I can compare. So I'm only going to be swapping out two nozzles right now. So to start, this is a million times easier and faster than on a single tool head. I have swapped that out and I do have a separate video of that, but to be able to pop these tool heads off and set them on the side is huge. You have much better angles on it. It's just way easier to deal with this type of tool head. Okay, so on tool head five, I run this very fast. So instead of the proper protocol of unhooking the cables, I just jump into with my Torx eight key, I unhook the screw. There's, you can see on the side where I had put that in, you just have to unscrew it a couple times, not a big deal, and it will lower the nozzle. I didn't unscrew it enough, so my nozzle didn't really drop down, um, but I was able to still unscrew it. I just had some troubles when I was screwing it back in. So I just used the provided pliers and the universal wrench the pliers I wanted to keep the nozzle in or the hot end in place because there is going to be a little bit of pressure and then you will have to continue to use the wrench quite a few times to loosen it and I did notice at this point that I just didn't have it low enough because I can't quite get that wrench to turn all the way around so I'm kind of just doing little half turns which is a little bit quirky but I do get it. It's, it works out fine. And once you have it released enough, you can just, instead of using the wrench, you can just um, continue unscrewing it with your fingers. There are an awful lot of threads on these new nozzles. I'm not really sure. I thought that this was supposed to be a faster process, but with all those threads, I, I feel like it takes quite a bit longer. But you can see that this one's out. This one is a 0.6 nozzle. Okay, so I continue to leave it still attached. I do not remove the cables. I take the new nozzle out and start putting it in as it is right now. Um, and it is doable. It definitely is still doable. 
but it is a little bit tricky because the way that the cables are, it kind of makes the whole hot end pull at a funny angle. And actually on my single tool head, I crossed the threads and actually messed it up enough that I ended up having to go get a tap and die and recut my threads because I couldn't get it to sit completely flush. So knowing that for my single tool head, I do go very slow in trying to screw these back in. Um, you can see there, it's just, it really wants to pull funny, but I am so stubborn and I feel like, okay, I didn't unhook the cables yet, so I'm going to get this back in without unhooking the cables. And really the trick, if you do want to go this route, is that you need to take your time and make sure that you only are screwing in. If, if you do start to feel like there's any resistance, don't just grab the wrench and crank on it. Unscrew it and redo it and just slowly adjust it a little bit at a time until everything is perfectly straight and really you should be able to screw in quite a while before you need the wrench. If you are having troubles and you feel like you need the wrench right away, then you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a problem. You're, and it's very easy to cross your threads and actually damage this. When I did that with a single tool head, there were not additional hot ends available. I tried to order one and they were not selling them to me. I have since ordered one just to have a backup but I just don't want to mess this up. So I just really would say, take your time. You can see that the nozzle is sitting flush. There is no gap. It looks really good. And after doing this once this way, I just don't think it's worth it. On the next one, I decide that I'm going to remove the cables. So I want to make sure that the hot end has the right angle on it. So I take out the tool head one, just so that I can compare and just make sure that it does look the same. And I do think that it looks pretty good. So I grab the Torx key and tighten it back up again. And then I check it again after it's tightened up. That grub screw on the front is tightened up. And I feel like they look really good as far as the angle is, looks how it should. Okay, so tool head five is done. And now I'm going to move on to tool head four. I go through the same process of unscrewing the front grub screw. I do unscrew it more to make sure that this, uh, that the hot end is a little bit more, I have a little bit more slack so it does drop down just a little bit more. And then I completely remove the nozzle like I did before. And I was still planning to do the same process again that I was going to not unhook the cables. But when I start trying to get the nozzle back in, I just am fighting so hard to get it straight that I decide it's not worth it. I thought that by not removing the cables that I would save a little bit of time, but fighting with it like this is not saving me any time. And for whatever reason, I feel like from the single tool head, it took a lot longer to go through the correct process. So I thought that it would be faster, but it's not. So I loosen the screw on the back of this cover. I felt like Prusha's instructions said that it was the same wrench or key as for the grub screw, but it did not seem like that was the correct one. So I'm able to switch it out and get this removed. And then you do have to kind of flip it up at the same time. It kind of like pops out and up at the same time, even though I had this completely flipped around. And it's just two cables in there. There's two along the top that need to be unplugged. And once you get that, then everything will slip right out and you have a lot more flexibility to be able to get this nozzle in perfectly straight. You don't have those cables pulling funny. I don't pull the cables completely out. I just feel like I need enough slack to be able to get it just kind of smooth. And again, I go through and just slowly tighten it until I'm sure that I'm not cross threading anything. And I do have to do that a couple times, but I do get it and I'm able to hand tighten almost all the way in so I mean it really there should be enough slack I just had to tighten it at the very end and at this point I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't do this originally there does seem to already be a little bit of pinching on the cables though so I don't love that but it's super easy to just put that back in place and plug everything back in 
much simpler. I tighten the screw on the cover again, and I do make sure to snug the hot end up tight before tightening with the grub screw, and I do turn it at that same 45 degree angle, and make sure that it matches the other tool heads. Everything looks good. So I am completely done with the changing out of the nozzles, but there is a couple more steps that I do want to do. I do want to make sure to load the filament back in so that I can make sure that everything is plugged in correctly. There's no issues with that and everything purges. And then I need to tell the printer that I changed the nozzles. So if you go into settings and then tools, then you can click on the tools that you changed. So four, and you can change the diameter. There's a lot more options in here than I was expecting. So I'm making sure that I'm not clicking that wrong. Um, so I'm going from 0.6 down to 0.4 and that's all that it takes. Let me know if you're planning to swap out the nozzles on your Prusa XL. Thanks for watching.